Well, hello everyone. This is Ron and our YouTube channel, Empire Coins and Collectibles. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this channel. Uh, we hope you will find it informative, uh, friendly, and entertaining. Uh, Miss Empire does provide commentary on the things that I say and do, and sometimes it's at my expense. But we do laugh a lot in our house, and I think that uh, I've said this in the past, laughter is really medicine for the soul. So uh, we get a lot of medicine around here. Now, what are we going to talk about today? Well, it's going to continue our discussion about exonumatics or exonumia, out of coin collecting and into tokens, basically. Uh, exonumia is a broad category. There are good for tokens, hard time tokens, bus tokens, civil war tokens, I mean, telephone tokens. We can go on and on and on uh, in terms of the different types of categories of tokens. But today, we're going to share with you some Texas good for tokens. Some of them are from the 40s. Some of them might be a little early. But I believe there's a, a series of these all put out at once at different denominations. So before we go there, though, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. I almost forgot that. That would help us grow our channel, and we would be immensely uh, thankful for that. We hope to reach a lot of people and entertain and inform. Now, what is a good for token? A good for token can take the place of cash at special ev events. So like on a trade day, uh, there may be tokens issued when you pay for entry in there to the individuals. It might be good for 10 cents. It might be good for five cents. And you can use it as part of your purchase. So these good for tokens are may even be good for one drink. And uh, at the last call, if everybody hasn't uh, gotten their last drink and some people have paid for other people's drink, they get a token they can use the next time they're at the bar. But be that as it may, there's tokens for lots of different things. The good for token, however, that we're going to be talking about are denominated in, uh, I think, one half or two and a half cents, five cents, 10 cents, 15 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents a dollar and a dollar 50. And that will give you a sense of what's available out there. And some of these tokens are in unique shapes. Some of them are in excellent condition. All right, in order for us to look at these very closely, I'm not gonna show the tray to, uh, camera. I'm gonna go directly to the coin microscope. So let's go ahead and switch over to the coin microscope and we'll get a good view of our very first token. This one is a Texas token, good for one half cent. It's from Leonard Brothers. Uh, I'm not sure. They might have been a furniture uh, company. They might have been a, a hardware store, but they were, I believe, in Fort Worth. But all this says is good only at Leonard Brothers. You can't use it for currency in other places. Only the government has the right to produce currency and coins. Uh, so this is just something that they're doing for their repeat customers or to draw customers back into them at a later date. So you can go and spend this as a half cent at the time. And I think I think I was told these tokens are probably from the 30s and 40s and that time frame. Could be a little earlier. Let's flip it over, over because there's something interesting about this token. When you flip it over, even the tokens have dies that make them and look at what we see here. We see something going on with the die, or maybe it's just a scratch. Look down here. These kind of look like die cracks, don't they? Let's go down a little lower just to be sure that we're not missing anything. I have Civil War tokens where the die has split, and there's all sorts of die cracks all through there. Now, this may be just a scratch here on this one, but we'll get a closer look add it together and kind of determine what it is. Okay, remember if it's a die crack, it rises above the token. If it's a scratch, it is embedded in the token. This is kind of looking like, um, I don't know, a die crack maybe. It's above the surface of the token, but it also may be the gouge of a scratch. No, that looks like, that looks like a die crack. I don't know, what do you guys think? Does it look like it's above the surface of the coin or embedded? Uh, I think that's a scratch. That looks like a scratch. Yeah. Okay. 
So we're going to move it right back up. And here we are, we're back in focus. How about down here? This looks like something down there. Now, maybe that is a die cracker. It might be just contamination on the coin itself. Okay, we're going to get a little closer and we're going to go ahead and focus in on it. Oh, yeah, that looks like a die crack. You see that? You see that right there? That is some type of damage to the die. Yeah, and, and that's another reason why tokens are so very interested, uh, interesting to collect. Uh, they are not just for good for or to celebrate some event like the turn of the millennium or the landing on the moon. There's all sorts of tokens for the space program. They also may have die cracks and other types of errors on them. So let's get this thing back in focus. Okay, there it is. And we're going to put the light on so you can see it. So this is an interesting token. It's a half cent token. At the time when it was issued, you could use it to help compensate for your next purchase at Leonard's Brothers. Whenever I go to a, a, a coin show, I'm always asking the vendors if they have any interesting tokens to add to my token collection. And again, as you guys know, I collect just about everything associated with coins and currency. And I have a very large collection of tokens. Let's go to the next one. So the next one is a good for five cents in trade from C. Wide and Sons. Now I'm going to bring this back up so we get the whole coin in. It's a pretty good size coin. It's uh, bigger than a quarter, but smaller than a half dollar to give you kind of a, an indication of the size of that token. So you can see here, good for five cents in trade. So that means that you could go to whatever business C. White and Sons were. I, I'm not sure. And, and, and by the way, that's part of the fun in collecting tokens. You go and investigate the, uh, the merchant who put these tokens out. By the way, there's tax tokens as well. And uh, you can collect those from different states. But you go and find out what, what type of business they were and um, what they were selling. So here it is, C. White or Weed and Son. Uh, it's from Weedville, Texas. Some people collect tokens only from certain businesses. Now, this looks to have a little bit of environmental staining up here in that area. Let me see if I can adjust the light so you can see it better. Uh, maybe it was just a glare on there. Okay. So the other thing I like about this token is its shape. And I don't know. What do you guys think? What is that? That is a six-sided token. You have round tokens, you have square tokens, you have tokens that have five sides, tokens that have uh, six sides. Uh, you even have clover-shaped tokens. And I believe I've got an example of that here coming up. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one is from the same company. See weed and sun. So there's that. This one has some damage on it, it looks like. Let's go down and see if we can investigate this a little more. Because I don't know, are those scratches again or are, are they die cracks? So we're going to go down and investigate. And we'll see and find out together what this long line is. Well, I don't know, guys and gals. Let's go down a little bit lower. I'd have to get my eye loop out, right? And I have misplaced my eye loop. It's around here. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to pull it out and look at it right quick myself. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you better be careful when you uh, get ready to put coins on the screen. Uh, make sure that you have anything that's coming from your environment wiped off the coin. Uh, that was a, a hair, believe it or not. I think it was my dog's hair. Normally we're, we're pretty good about keeping the house clean, but that one was from one of the pets. Okay. But what about this one down here? Let's go over here. The one that goes straight through Weedville. That sounds like I'm giving directions from somebody. Is that a die crack or is that a scratch? What do you guys think? Let's go a little lower.
that looks like a scratch, right? Something's plowed in through there. Now, a lot of the tokens are made out of aluminum. When tokens are made out of aluminum, it's a very soft metal, and the least little thing will uh, scratch that metal. That's the reason why some of them, if you find an MS65 to 70 uh, coin that's an aluminum coin, and it, it is in pristine state or you're an MS70, it's going to be a rare coin because most coins are tokens that are made out of aluminum. Do not weather well, if I could use that word, survive well, wear well uh, through the years because the metal is soft. Let's flip it over so you can see the denomination. It is a 10 cent good for token good for 10 cents in trade. And that in trade is that weed, see weed and sons business. Could have been a general store, could have been a hardware store, just not sure what it was, but there it is. I have a different good for token. It's another 10 cent token. Uh, from, uh, I believe this is from BB Poor, Bridgeport. So let's put it under the, Microscope, whoops, it's upside down. Just want to turn it right side up. So this one is also six sided, right? Let me get a little more light up here. Kind of share the light. So it's good for 10 cents in merchandise, not in trade, but in merchandise. They have different words on it. We'll flip it over and notice it's rotated a bit. So this is BB Poor Bridgeport, Texas. So notice the orientation of the staples. They're kind of slanted this way and slanted that way. I'm gonna flip it back over. And when I do, the uh, 10 cent is not quite oriented properly. Uh, let me see. It's like it's like it's 100, it's like it's 90 degrees out of uh, orientation. So there's something else you can look for tokens, whether or not they are oriented properly as you flip them over, turn them side to side as normal coins. Here's another good for 10 cent token. This is CF Helmuth from Belleville, Texas. Uh, I like this. This looks to be a brass token, a more hardy metal. And these things generally are probably going to be from the uh, 30s, uh, 20s and 30s, I would expect. Let's flip it over. And you see C.F. Helmuth, Belleville, Texas. That was the name of the company. Don't know what they sold. I don't know if it's tires or a gas station or, or a, a, a general store. Just don't know. But it's an interesting token. You could do the research and find out. Okay, so that was for the 10 cent tokens. Let's go back to uh, C. Wade and Sons. This one is a 15 cent, good for 15 cent in trade. This one's kind of interesting. The, uh, the sculpting of the N in trade, in the word N is um, got some edges to it. Again, it's a soft metal. It is aluminum. Let's sit back. And aluminum is highly reflective. So we want to get it where we can see it with these lights. Okay, I'm about 14 minutes into this, so we're gonna speed it up. And there's that again. Let's go to the next uh, token. That would be the 25 cent token, and it's from Weed and Sun as well. Uh, this coin is a fine, or this token is a fine looking token. It seems to be a little bit off centered, just a bit when it was made. Looks like this coin was stamped and then cut to the shape. I don't know. Uh, the the machining on this coin in terms of uh, creating that six-sided uh, coin hexagonal was not as pristine as others. And it's got some wear and tear on it. Okay. Here's an interesting one. This is the not quite clover, but it looks almost like a clover token. It's got rounded size. This is a uh, 25 cents good for merchandise, 25 cents in trade for merchandise. I like that token. I imagine that's made out of nickel, maybe. It seems to be a little more robust than the aluminum. This is BB Poor from Bridgeport, Texas. All right. That was the 25 cent. Here's another one. This is 
more flower, I guess flower like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like it's got ten lo uh, lobes to it. Look at that. Wow, that's gorgeous. That's a good for 25 cents in merchandise. And it was put out by, let me flip it over so we can read it. Theo W. Waring General Merchandise. There you go. And it's Blibel, Bliberville, maybe? Bleaverville? Uh, pardon me if you're from that city and I'm mispronouncing or butchering it. I'm doing the best I can. But it is a beautiful brass type token is probably from the 20s and 30s around that time frame all right let's move on we're going to go to the 50 cent token and we're back to weed and sun here's the 50 cent token good for 50 cents in trade probably a merchant a hardware or just general mercantile okay and now we're going to move on to a dollar token and this is also from o eichler carmen texas good for one dollar in trade i'm going to move this thing up so we get a good view of the entire token okay that's uh interesting isn't it let me move the lights around so we can get a good view of all of it don't want to get the lights in the way right. but this particular company, you could take this token in. It's got a little damage there at the bottom. O. Eichler, Carmine, Texas. And you could use this for a dollar. Now, just think about it. Back then, a dollar was quite a bit of money. If this were in the 30s, 40s, and 50s time frame, well, even in the 60s, you could buy a candy bar for 12 cents. Today, a candy bar is going to cost you, what, $2.50? So this was a pretty hefty valued token for that business pretty good hmm. but if that's pretty good how about this one this one is a dollar fifty this is good for a dollar fifty in merchandise only so there must have been other things like food or something i don't know but a dollar fifty again that's a pretty hefty token in terms of value of what you could get for it Considering that if in the 60s, a candy bar cost you 12 cents, uh, what was it in the 30s, 40s, and 50s? Five cents, right? Maybe. So you could buy quite a bit with that token. What type of business was it? Let's see if we can find out. So this is Grogan Manufacturing uh, from Gladstone, Gladstone, Texas. So this was uh, a token for perhaps getting something manufactured, maybe even the tokens themselves. And it's not transferable. They gave it to their customer. You couldn't transfer it to anybody else. So that's kind of interesting. So again, tokens have a very large, uh, diverse uh, echo sphere that you can go out and collect anything and everything uh, from bar tokens to trade tokens, good for tokens, good for one bar of soap type tokens. I've got some of those. I'll show those a little later in a different episode. But before we leave, I want to transfer this over and let you see something I pulled up, eBay. Now, the way you get to eBay you, uh, and the exonumia, you go to the, cat the general category of coins and paper money. You click on that. And then you come down to this line that says exonumia. That means it's not coins or currency. It's out of coins and currency. It's everything else that has value that's generally, generally looking like a coin. So those are tokens. And you can click on that. And notice when you click on it, you see Canadian tokens, car wash tokens, Civil War tokens, elongated tokens, encased tokens, fantasy tokens are tokens that are created by people to celebrate certain types of events. They're not done in large numbers and they're typically one-off type tokens. Uh, good luck tokens, hard time tokens from the early 1820s, 30s, and 40s. People generate and create hobo tokens where they'll take a nickel, a buffalo nickel, and carve other figures on it. So there's just a tremendous amount of areas under tokens that one can begin to build a collection. And it's so very, very interesting. 
I hope this has been informative and helpful. I hope you find it interesting. And if you want to know more about tokens, there are tons of books put out by them. You can start by going online, even reading about certain tokens on eBay. But go and buy the book before you buy the coin or the token. That way you're more informed. Now, when you're out there at garage sales, estate sales, thrift stores, uh, coin uh, shops, and coin shows, you're going to find a plethora of opportunities to add to your token collection. And with that, my friend, please be careful out there. And you know something, if you're not looking, you're not finding. Good hunting. All the best. Thank you.